This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for kind of the sweet spot, uh, higher end of the sweet spot of the sort of affordable yet sort of premium laptops. This is the Dell Inspiron 16 Plus 7630 for 2023, a 16-inch laptop that is perfect for those who are going to college and you don't tell your parents you want a gaming laptop because they would say no but you want a laptop that can do gaming that's what this is instead of getting an intel g series or a gaming laptop you get the idea uh powerful we have intel h series 13th gen processors those are the 45 watt ones unlike the dell inspiron 16 not plus model which has the p series 28 watt, watt processors and tops out in nvidia rtx 2050 graphics well this one we have here is NVIDIA RTX 4060 graphics, 60 watts, so not super high wattage. You can also, you know, get it with a 4050 and same wattage, so it might be a good idea. But anyway, that's enough power to have game and also to do all that creative stuff that people want to do today, whether you're editing videos, you're doing a little bit of Blender work, you name it. We're going to look at it now. And now a shout out to our sponsor, ESR, an established maker of MagSafe accessories, among other things. And they want to help you level up your MagSafe charging with their 25 watt three in one charger that charges not just your iPhone, but also your wireless charging capable AirPods and the Apple Watch. It's Apple certified for the Apple Watch and supports full five watt charging. And also they have a car version of that, a 15 watt car charger that has cryo boost just like the desktop model as well so what does that mean cryo boost means keeps the phone cooler up to 10 degrees fahrenheit cooler than competing chargers the 25 watt three in one charger can charge an iphone pro to full from empty in two hours which is faster than one of our certified competing brands by 45 minutes the car charger can do the same charging in up to five times faster speed than competing chargers and keeping it cool at the same time thanks to CryoBoost. They both have strong magnetic locks, which is particularly important when you're driving for the car charger. Be sure to check out the link in the description. And now back to our video. So the idea here is to be more affordable than the Dell XPS line. That's always been the Inspiron's job and there have always been various quality levels from yeah, a little more basic to fairly premium. Obviously this is about as premium as they've ever gotten. The list price is not cheap on this. It's cheap compared to the Dell XPS line of laptops, but it's $1,650. Happily they often have sales and you can get up to $400 off. So go ahead and wait for one of those. And that is certainly a seriously good buy. And obviously besides being something that is the more affordable alternative to an XPS 15 or 17 it competes with the likes of the HP Envy 16 Asus has a competitor and so on what Dell brings to the table is a QHD plus display 16 by 10 aspect ratio it's a matte display it's 120 Hertz that all sounds great uh, the brightness on it is only 300 nits that's the only gotcha but when you open it up out of the box at least if you're like us you're gonna think it's a lot dimmer let me show you what you have to do with Intel settings to deal with that all right as shipped to us the Intel graphics settings on this would make it so dim and so bad so to change it just type in Intel right here and you should come up with Intel graphics command center and then go to the system tab on the left and then go to power and see right here power efficiency ours was set at the maximum which is six the higher the number the better the power efficiency but the worse the display looks when it was set at six we measured just under 200 nits of brightness and color accuracy that was so bad the bars went off the graph which is a bad thing bars should be shorter so i set it to one for our tests here now if it's running on the nvidia dgpu it probably runs brighter and has better colors by default but most of the time if you're doing productivity work or streaming video it's going to be on intel graphics so keep this in mind you could play around with it even putting it somewhere in the middle or over here would be okay and wouldn't look so bad so just don't return the laptop till you try changing that setting that's how bad that setting is that i had to tell you about it all right now we've got that out of the way just do that tweak right there and then your brightness is up to 300 nits instead of 200 nits and the color accuracy bar graph instead of being horrible is pretty workable even if you kind of care about how good your content looks it's close enough without getting a color limiter makes it nice for creative types doesn't it just like the rtx 4060 gp is going to help with video editing with blender renders and stuff like that if you're doing 2d work in photoshop you honestly don't need that much graphics power power 
However, the Intel H series Core i7 CPU will be good to have no matter whether it's what, whether it's Photoshop or 3D work, anything in between. I'm, goodness knows, maybe you're a power accountant and you've gotten to the point in graduate school where you're doing massive pivot spreadsheets and all that sort of thing with lots and lots of rows. It's there. And the cooling on this is pretty good. We'll take a look at the internals so you can see that. It's got two fans inside, one of them being pretty beefy actually. Uh, the surface temperatures on this, considering we do have an aluminum chassis on board, not bad even when it's working hard. Now something to note is the performance plans make more than of a difference than usual. And that's actually a good thing for a mixed use laptop like this. You bring it to class or you bring, bring it to the office in a meeting and you're not doing any heavy lifting, right? The balance mode really does a good job of preserving battery life. But if you really need all the oomph, like in benchmarks, for example, we'd saw like a 15% increase in benchmark numbers if we put it in performance mode versus balance mode. Usually we don't see that much of a difference, sometimes even 20%. The benchmarks that you'll see on screen are all done in balance mode, which is how it ships out of the box. So you can do even better is what I'm telling you there. So it's nice to have that. That's what power plans were meant to be. It's good to see they actually do make a difference. The ports on this are pretty decent. You have two USB-A ports, you have Thunderbolt 4, you have a barrel pin connector for the charger so it doesn't use up your USB-C port, though you could use a USB-C charger. You have a headphone jack, thank God, and a micro SD card slot. If you get the less powerful Inspiron non-plus models or the 2-in-1, yes, there's a 2-in-1 also less powerful than this, then those have more room inside because they don't have the bigger DGPU and you can get a full-size SD card on that. So that's pretty decent. We have the HDMI 2.0, not 2.1. Well, at least we have HDMI, don't we? Keyboard on this is pretty tactile. I'm not even a fan of the XPS series of keyboards. I find them a little hard feeling and low travel, but this is very tactile and clicky. It's nice. And the trackpad, I love. It is responsive. It doesn't do anything weird. It's not too slick and slippery, so you don't have your finger going whoop, whoop everywhere and doing things you didn't mean to do. Well done on that front. We have quad stereo speakers, the usual two tweeters, two woofers kind of configuration. and. It gets really loud, but has no bass. Battery life on this, like I said, keep it on balanced mode and you'll do well. If you leave it with the Intel draconian uh, graphics quality settings too, that will extend your battery life at the price of looking at a very dim and icky display. But anyway, I, I left it at the default middle setting for the Intel graphics there and running it at 200 nits of brightness, doing mixed productivity work and some streaming video, the 86 watt hour battery averaged about seven hours of runtime, which for a laptop this powerful with a 45 watt CPU and a decent dedicated graphics processor inside, that's pretty good. 130 watt charger, like I said, on board, not too, too heavy, not too, too bulky compared to say a gaming laptop. That's also a plus if you kind of want to have game on the side, but you don't want to be trudging around with something that is a boat anchor, it does the job. All right, to get inside, there are nine Phillips head tiny screws, Phillips head zero screws, and two of them are captive to help lift the back off. And boy, this thing has some tenacious plastic clips. This is what happened to my iFixit, well, guitar pick style tool right there. So be careful because, you know, Dell metal bottom laptops also can be a little sharper on the edges. Get those off anyway, and then pry it off. And then there is our cover. And there are some plastic clips that run along and snap in here. So you're going to feel it's still gripping in the middle. Just keep in mind that that's going to happen to you. And now to set off your OCD, here is a diagonally located M.2 SSD. So that's the one and only SSD slot. That is the Wi-Fi card there. And two RAM slots this year. Yay, that's so good, good times. You can upgrade it, keep dual channel memory, no matter what configuration you want there. And we've got two fans on our heatsink here for the CPU and GPU, pretty large one there. And um, the cooling is pretty effective in terms of CPU and GPU temperatures on the thing. And chassis temperatures are certainly acceptable given the power and the aluminum top and bottom panels that we have. Speakers right there, very loud speakers, not a super lot of bass, but boy, they are loud. So that's the Dell Inspiron 16 Plus for 2023, under five pounds, like four and a half pounds, which is two kilograms of aluminum clad goodness. Enough horsepower to have some fun with, to do some creativity work, to do some blender work, rendering, anything you can think of. And in a package that doesn't scream, I'm a OP laptop sort of thing. Uh, the only challenges are the price. It's $1,650. It's getting kind of expensive, but like I said, wait for those sales. It's going to help with that. And the display may require some settings tweaks to actually get the brightness up and the color accuracy improved on it. But uh, overall, 
as a jack of all trades, it, it, that does the job pretty well, actually. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos. And thumbs up if you like this vid.